Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Dragana Buell. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, The Desperate Daughter, True and Tall Family Tales, Volume 1, available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And I will say, Dragana was brought to people of distinction today by some of the best movers in the business, Parchment Global Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, move it to Parchment. You can find them at parchmentglobalpublishing.com. And guys, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have her here on the line today because her book we're going to be discussing, The Desperate Daughter. It's a fictional narrative, but it's loosely based on true events. It's going to revolve around a concept of arranged marriages. Now, that is something that, of course, is still very common in different cultures around the world. And it's something that I'm sure you have all heard of. And you may know people that either, A, are in arranged marriages or their families have some type of history revolving around it. And I remember when I was first introduced to that concept, there was an Indian woman that I knew. I knew her from high school, even up until college, and her parents were set up through an arranged marriage. And of course, it was just assumed that when she got of age, she was also going to be put in a very similar circumstance. And that is actually what happened. When she was in her early 20s, we were in college and getting ready to get out of it at that point. That was exactly what happened. Her father was actually in the process of setting up potential suitors for her. And we looked at it in our generation, of course, growing up here in the States. It's something that isn't isn't as common to us. So we looked at it as almost an archaic tradition. And she was very, very much against it. And I remember a lot of the problems that she went through and the arguments that she had with her family because she didn't want to go into this arranged marriage. She had her own beliefs. She had her own desires. She wanted to find her own suitor, her own mate that she actually loved prior to going into it. And listen, I'm not going to be the person to advocate one way or the other. This is a tradition that has been going on for a number of years. And it's not my place to say whether it's a benefit official thing or not. I know people that have actually come through an arranged marriage and actually have had a very successful marriage in a very successful relationship. So there are success stories that can be found. But I'm so excited that we have Dragana here on the line to really discuss it because again, it's based upon true events. She's going to be discussing a storyline from her family. And I'm so excited that we have her here on the line because listen, she has a direct experience from her family. She's going to be able to articulate all the nuances in her book much better than I ever could. So sit back, relax, let's enjoy, let's learn from her story. So without further ado, before we even jump into the book itself, Dragana, First and foremost, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're, we're looking forward to this and we're looking forward to acquiring some of the knowledge and the wisdom that you've been able to acquire and relay to our listening audience. Before we go into the book itself, let's hold off slightly. Talk to our listening audience. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, I am of Serbo-Croatian origin. I was born in the former Yugoslavia. I came here at 12 and a half, and I've been pretty much Americanized, and uh, I definitely don't agree with arranged marriages. <laughs> there it is. Well, I'm glad you just went out. Saying, I was being more politically correct, and I'm like, listen, I'm not going to go one way or the other, but I'm glad you just put it right out there, and it's something that you're against. No, let's jump right into the book, The Desperate Daughter, True and Tall Family Tales, Volume 1. Tell us a little bit about your book. It, it's loosely based on the courtship of my grand, my maternal grandparents, mm -hmm. who uh, were living at a time at the late 19th century, and um, where all women were expected in their culture to uh, enter into arranged marriages because the parents felt they were wiser and more experienced in, choo in choosing their potential mates. My grandmother was not very happy about that, and she tried to resist it as much as she could, and uh, she rejected many suitors until the following, uh, until a suitor came into her life that she could not resist anymore for a very, very long time. So this is a story about their courtship. Absolutely. Dragana, next question that I'd love to get into, let's talk about inspiration. Now, of course, again, you said this is loosely based upon your family, right? Your maternal grandparents. 
So I know why this was something that was maybe a particular interest to you to look into, but why didn't it end there? What inspired you to take this story and actually put it out for the public to partake in as well? I was really interested in it myself, and I wanted to pass it on to my children. And it, then later on, I realized it would be something that other people might be still experiencing coming from other cultures or living in other cultures. And uh, they might be interested in reading how this turned out. Absolutely. We know that this is something that is actually still very prevalent today. Uh, you know, as I stated, it seems to our contemporary audiences and myself included, it seems like an archaic tradition, but we know it still happens, right? I mean, we know that it is something that still is very much a large portion of certain cultures. And by you comprising this book and putting it out there, other people that have experience with this or other people that find themselves in a similar situation, I think the biggest benefit is knowing that they're not alone. Right? That it is, it's okay to disagree with this tradition and hopefully fight it to the point where they get that freedom. Now, Dragana, any tips that you can offer our listening audience or maybe anybody that is listening in right now and finds themselves in a similar situation? I don't believe it's prevalent in modern Serbia or Croatia. Mm -hmm. I think that um, most people are being allowed to have the freedom to choose their own mates. But uh, it might be happening in some other cultures, uh, in some villages maybe, in Asia or Africa, or even maybe in our Europe where this might still be happening, but I'm not aware of it. Mm -hmm. In terms of the book itself, of course, I know this is loosely based upon your family. We've, we've stated this multiple times. In addition to your own experience, was there any type of research that you did in preparation for this book? I mostly talk to people from other cultures. Um, I live in New York City where there are many people from different countries and uh, I have talked to them as research and uh, they have all told me that it still is happening or m most of them told me that it's still happening in their countries but mostly not in the cities it's happening in small towns and villages guys again here on the line with Dragana Buell. We're discussing her book, The Desperate Daughter, True and Tall Family Tales, Volume 1. Available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Now, Dragana, curiosity for myself. I see, of course, with the title, at the end of it, True and Tall Family Tales, Volume 1. So if you put a Volume 1 there, I'm anticipating that there's a soon to be a Volume 2, potentially. Talk to us about that title and why you chose that to be the representation for your book and what you have showcased in the future. I expect it to be in a series of volumes, and I have already written volume two, which is a hopeful daughter, daughter and uh, I plan to uh, embellish that with mm -hmm. all the information that I learned about my grandmother and, uh, and the courtship that she had. Beautiful. So there will be a sequel coming out for this, or there's a sequel already completed for this, where we follow the same protagonist, which is, of course, based upon your grandmother, correct? Yes. Beautiful. Looking forward to that. That is fantastic. And as you stated, you want it to be a series of books. So volume two is not going to be the end. There may be another, a third, or even possibly a fourth coming out. Now, as we start to step away from the book slightly, Dragana, I'm curious. Now, of course, this is the book that you've written. As you just stated, you're hopefully planning on developing a series of books from this. We know what inspired you to write this narrative. Now, what inspired you to embark upon a creative journey of this magnitude and become a writer? Well, I have always wanted to write because I lived in a family where uh, there was a writer. And uh, I used to write even, even while I was scribbling. I was pretending to write. So I always <laughs> expected to write stories, and I had stories in my mind that I wanted to put down on paper. So this is something that's been a part of you since a very early age. Of course, as you stated in your family, you have a writer. So listen, passion is what passion is, right? Even if you're not writing down words, as you said, you were just scribbling. It was something that you had, you know, you just had passion for it. That's fantastic that you continued and really pursued it throughout your life. Now, you know, I'm curious, Dragana, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon the journey? Well, I was very happy that I was able to complete the book. I, it was 
I was working at the same time. I was a teacher, and I, I really didn't have much time. So I, it took me a long time to write it. And then um, once I completed it, I felt that was an accomplishment. Absolutely. You know, in the segue off of that, I'm an artist myself, and I'm in a different medium. I'm an actor and a filmmaker based in Los Angeles. But I love having this platform to be able to pay it forward to other artists, in a sense. Now, Dragana, you're someone that has been through the process of writing your book and getting it published. And as you stated, you know, you're wanting to continue along that journey. I'd love to ask, what advice would you be able to offer a new writer, someone just starting out? I would like to tell the person who is beginning to write to persist and persevere and not be discouraged and just continue writing because as soon as you stop running, writing, other things happen in your life that interfere with your writing. So what you need to do is set a particular time of day in the morning or at whatever time is convenient for you to write for a specific number of time of hours or minutes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What great advice. I mean, it's like the old cliche, right? Practice makes perfect. Guys, anything that you want to do, anything that you're dedicated to, it's going to take time. It doesn't happen overnight, but you have to slowly chip away at it. Right? It's, you don't build a wall entirely all at once. You build a wall one brick at a time. But it takes dedication. It takes perseverance. And eventually, you'll get that wall finished. And you'll get the story in which you're wanting to create fantastic words of wisdom. Thank you very much for sharing. Guys, listen, what more can be said? You know what you got to do. You got to go to Amazon. You got to go to Barnes & Noble. There's no other place for it. Pick up your copy of The Desperate Daughter, True and Tall Family Tales, Volume 1. And also, check back in frequently because as she stated, there's a Volume 2 on the horizon. Hopefully more in the future. All by Dragana Buell. You surely will not be disappointed. As we stated, the specific subject matter in which we're talking about here is a young woman that wanted to really go against tradition. She wanted to find her own love. She wanted to really build the life that she envisioned for herself, not the life that her family or her parents envisioned for her. And maybe you can't relate to that specific message, but really the underlying theme for it is not being afraid to go against the grain, not being afraid to go against tradition. And I know that is something that we can all relate to. How often in life do we allow fear to really discourage us from pursuing what we're wanting for ourselves, the way we're wanting our lives to develop? Utilizing this book, utilizing the message that Dragana has put in for us and really infused in the story, so much that we'll be able to take from it. So you know what you got to do. Dragana, this has been an absolute blessing. Thank you so much again for being a guest with us today at People of Distinction. It's my pleasure.